الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فهذا هو الدرس الثاني في القراءة في الأروى الوثقى This is the second class in our readings in the work الأروى الوثقى The strongest bond, the strongest covenant, the strongest hand hold and means of safety, savior, and protection, and happiness and joy in this life and the hereafter. Referring to the statement of Al-Islam, Karimatul Ikhlas, al qawl al-Thabit, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. The testification that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. And this is the statement of at tawheed And this is what the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had come with. This was what was revealed to him and all of the prophets and messengers before him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to the tawheed of Allah azza wa jal. That the religion should be made purely, sincerely, in all actions of devotion, of worship and servitude, inwardly with the heart, and likewise outwardly with the tongue, and on the body parts, it must be sincerity for the sake of Allah alone. It must be sincerely for the sake of Allah alone. And if we were to read and ponder over the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Noble Qur'an, we will find that the Qur'an in entirety, the Noble Qur'an in entirety, from the beginning to the end, is all about Tawheed. Is all about Tawheed. Every single verse in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal is establishing the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. Is establishing the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned this in his book, Madari Jasarikin. And I summarize these points here because indeed it's a great benefit. Because indeed it's a great benefit. Al Quran kulluhu fit Tawheed. Al Quran kulluhu fit Tawheed. The Quran in entirety is all about Tawheed. Singling out Allah alone for all actions of worship. And this occurs in a number of aspects to clarify. The first issue is that the, the Quran. Is that the Quran informs us about Allah, informs us about His beautiful names and His lofty attributes of perfection and His actions, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and this is at tawheed And this is at tawheed And likewise, the Quran is calling the people to single out Allah alone for all actions of worship and to make the deen sincerely and purely for the sake of Allah and to free oneself from the worship of others besides Allah in the false and deviant ways. This is what we find in the book of Allah. Likewise, in the book of Allah, it consists of commandments and prohibitions and the obligation of holding fast to them in application by performing the commandments and avoiding staying away from the prohibitions in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the rights of Tawheed and the means to perfect it. And this is the rights of Tawheed and the means to perfect it. These words here are very important for a believer to understand. The commandments and prohibitions that are found in the book of Allah. The, uh, the commandments and the prohibitions that are found in the book of Allah and the obligation of, of, of establishing and the obligation of establishing the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the rights of Tawheed this is the rights of Tawheed and the means to complete it and to perfect it meaning that a person maybe he has Tawheed but if he did not complete it and perfect it his Tawheed will be deficient and the means to complete and to perfect it Tawheed is by establishing the commandments and prohibitions in one's life is by establishing the commandments and prohibitions in one's life. In one's life. In this manner, the tawheed becomes complete. In this manner, the rights of that statement are fulfilled. And in the right of that person, this statement is heavy in his scale. And strong and beneficial for him in this life and in the hereafter. As for if those rights are violated or if there's negligence with regards to performing them, those commandments and prohibitions, then the statement becomes deficient likewise accordingly. And it becomes light, likewise, accordingly. And the person, the benefit that he will have from that statement, it becomes less and weaker. So this is a great point. The point now is to realize that this is what we find in the book of Allah. And all of this is Tawheed. And all of this is at Tawheed. Likewise, whenever we read the book of Allah, we will find Allah informing us in His Noble Quran about the reward. About the reward and the great aid and assistance and help that the people of a Tawheed they have in this life. And the good honor and noble outcome they have in the hereafter and the promise of paradise. So it's about the people of a Tawheed and the good recompense that they have for establishing the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. Likewise in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we also see verses that mention the people of a shirk. 
it men that mentioned the warning from Ashirk and the people of Ashirk and how they're disgraced and how they are belittled in this life and the hereafter and how they have the severe, painful, humiliating punishment in, on the day of resurrection and in the hereafter. So it's about the recompense of, it's about the good recompense of the people of the Tawheed and likewise clarifying the foul outcome of those who oppose the Tawheed, of those who oppose the Tawheed. So from these points here, we find that the entire Qur'an from the beginning to the end is all about establishing the Tawheed of Allah. Ibn Qayyim, he says, فَالْقُرْآنُ كُلُّهُ فِي التَّوْحِيدِ وَحُقُوقِهِ وَجَزَائِهِ وَفِي شَأْنِ الشِّرْكِ وَأَهْلِهِ وَجَزَائِهِمْ So therefore, Al-Qur'an, all of its entirety is about Tawheed and the rights of Al-Tawheed and their good recompense of, of Al-Tawheed. And likewise, the issue of Al-Shirk, which, which is the opposite, which is contrary to Tawheed and the people of Shirk, and the foul outcome and recompense that they will have. So every single verse is about is about these affairs here, either informing about Allah Azza wa Jal and His beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection, or His noble and perfect actions of ultimate wisdom, Subhanahu wa Taala, or clarifying likewise the obligation of making the actions of worship sincerity for the sake of Allah, or clarifying the commandments of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah, and encouraging the people to establish the obedience of Allah, which is all about Tawheed. Or likewise referring verses that are referring to the, the good outcome and the aid and support in this life of the people of the Tawheed, those who establish those commandments and prohibitions and those who surrender in obedience to Allah Azza wa that they would have. And likewise in the hereafter, the good outcome and the paradise and the great honor that they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, uh, in the Jannah. And also contrary to that, those who oppose the Tawheed and those who are disobedient to Allah Azza wa and rebel against His commandments and prohibitions, the foul outcome that they will have in this life and likewise the humiliating punishment that they will have in the hereafter. So from this aspect, the entire book of Allah Azza wa Jal is about Tawheed. So now I can ask you, Barakallah Fikum, Surat, Surah, uh, Surah Al-Masad. Who knows this Surah? Surat Al-Masad. Who knows this chapter? Ah, everybody, right? You, you know it. How does it start? This chapter is all about Tawheed. From, from what aspect? From what we just discussed here, these points. From what aspect? The chapter. All about Tawheed. This is about Tawheed. From what aspect? This is this, yeah, okay. Anybody else? From what aspect? How can we say that the surah, surah al masad which is about the foul outcome of Abi Lahab and his wife, it's all about Tawheed. How is that? It's clarifying the reality of Shirk and the foul outcome of those who fall into Shirk and oppose it Tawheed. Abu Lahab, he opposed it Tawheed, and, uh, the, and his wife, likewise, opposed it Tawheed, and this is the outcome that they had. This is the outcome that they had, that they will be disgraced and punished in the hellfire, in the hellfire. So this is clarifying the foul outcome of those who oppose the Tawheed. So the entire Qur'an, from the beginning to the end, either directly or indirectly, in one manner, is clarifying the reality of at, at Tawheed. This is all informing us of the importance of studying and learning the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa in detail. And to study it time after time in order to make sure that the Tawheed is firm in the heart and strong, and uh, that it is kept pure and clean, and that it is cherished and loved and preferred. Because the believers, they all have Tawheed, but some people fall into desires and whims, and they begin to prefer their lusts over the Tawheed, and over the obedience of Allah They obey their desires while, 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 and fall into sin while they know. So not, not only do we have to learn the Tawheed and understand it properly, also we have to prefer it. And not only do we have to learn the deen, the obedience of Allah, the, the religion of Al-Islam, the straight path, the actions and deeds and statements and creed that is pleasing to Allah, also we have to learn how to fight against our souls and to prefer that in application and to uphold those rights in our life daily. And to uphold those rights in our life daily. Because again, many people, they learn these affairs and then they oppose them. Either uh, out of stubborn rebellion or out of negligence or because they prefer their desires and their whims. And they're overcome by their lusts. And they have uh, misconceptions, 
feeling like they're going to live forever. Feeling like they're going to live forever. And they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the summary of the importance of the last chapter. This is the summary of the importance of the, la of the last chapter. Al-Urwa, Al-Wuthqa. Yani the issue of At-Tawheed. The issue of, of At-Tawheed. So now we move on in the author. He says, Babu Fadli Al-Islam. The chapter, the virtue of Al-Islam. Babu Fadli Al-Islam. The virtue of Al-Islam. You need the many virtues and the great beauties and benefits of the deen of Al-Islam. And we must understand, Barakallah Fikum, that we're discussing now, Al-Islam, and what is intended in this absolute sense is the Al-Islam, Al-Adhi Ja'a Bihi, Nabiyuna Muhammadun Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Al-Islam, Al-Adhi Allamahu Muhammadun Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ashabahu Wa Amiru Bihi. Faradiyallahu Anhum Inda Dharika. It's the Islam that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came with. The Islam that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught his companions and they applied that in their life until Allah was pleased with them. Until Allah was pleased with them. This is the Islam that we're referring to. And this is the Islam that, that is virtuous. Not the deen or the way that is ascribed falsely to our Islam. From the customs and cultures that were introduced later that Islam is free from. So the virtue of Al-Islam, you need the pure Islam, the true Islam, the good Islam, that we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide our hearts to love and to follow and to prefer. To guide our hearts to love and to follow and to prefer. So uh, al fadlu the meaning of al-fadlu, yani is ziyada. So these are the characteristics and the traits and the beautiful qualities of Al-Islam that the other religions, they do not have. That the other religions, they do not have. You need this is what Islam is better and increase the virtues, the aspects that make Islam the pure and good religion better than all other religions. Better than all other religions. And the people of knowledge, they mentioned that Islam it has two understandings. It has two understandings. And the general interpretation is Al-Istisnamu Lillahi Bit-Tawheed. Wal-Inqiyadu Lahu Bit-Ta'a. Wal-Bara'atu Min Al-Shirki Wa Ahlihi. And this is from the most beneficial interpretation and explanation of Al-Islam. And it's the general understanding and this is the understanding of the Islam that all of the prophets and messengers they came with. What is it? Al-Istislamu lillahi bit-tawheed. Wal-inqiyadu lahu bit-ta'a. Wal-bara'atu min al-shirki wa ahlihi. It consists of three major points. Al-Istislam lillahi bit-tawheed. To surrender and to submit to Allah with tawheed. To sing Allah alone for all actions of worship and surrender and submission. Wal-inqiyadu lahu bit-ta'a. And to comply to Him in obedience. And to comply to him in obedience, وَالْبَرَاءَةُ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ وَأَهْلِهِ And to free oneself from paganism and polytheism and its people. This is the pure Islam. And this is the good deen. And this is the way of all of the prophets and messengers until the best of them, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I repeat it again with hopes the brothers will write it down. And uh, will memorize it and understand it and learn it. أَلِسْتِسْلَامُ لِلَّهِ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ وَالْإِنْقِيَادُ لَهُ بِالطَّاعَةِ وَالْبَرَاءَةُ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ وَأَهْلِهِ To surrender and to submit to Allah with Tawheed. And to comply to Him in obedience. The rights of Tawheed. The rights of Tawheed which complete the Tawheed. And to free oneself from Shirk and His people. To free oneself from Shirk and His people. So this is the, the reality of Al-Islam in general. That all of the prophets and messengers that came with. The specific interpretation of Al-Islam وَمَا جَاءَ بِهِ نَبِيُّنَا مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فَكُلُّ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ يُسَمَّ إِسْلَامًا That which our Prophet has come with. This is the specific understanding about Islam. The specific understanding is that which Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم has come with. Everything that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has come with is called Al-Islam. We had taken in our previous class the narration of Ibn Umar رضي الله عنهما which is well known. بُنِي الْإِسْلَامُ وَعَلَى خَمْس the religion of Al-Islam is based upon five, referring to the five pillars. Shahadati an la ilaha illallah, wa na Muhammad an abduhu wa rasoolu, wa iqam al-salah, wa ita'i zakah, wa sawmi ramadhan, wa hajj al-bayt. Mentioning the five pillars of Al-Islam. We must understand, barakallahu feekum, that these are the pillars of Al-Islam and they're not all of Islam. These are the pillars of Al-Islam, but they're not all of Islam. If we look, for example, in this building around us, we'll find that the, this building was established on pillars. First they laid the foundation, and then they, lay, then they set up the pillars. But they did not leave the pillars there barren. The pillars of a building, for example, how are they? Many times they're made of iron. And they're, they're made of steel. And they're very hard. And they're very strong. They're very strong, but they're not decorated. So this is the reality of a pillar. So if we were to leave them like that, 
then the, the structure will be established, but it might not be so beautiful. So they didn't leave the masjid like this. Rather, they covered those pillars and they hid them and they decorate them and put around them decoration in the lights like this with walls, so on and so forth, and rocks and, and the lights and, and bricks in order to cover those pillars to make the building look beautiful and to complete the structure. To complete the structure. From the same idea of Allah Fikum, the pillars of Al-Islam, these are the pillars only. But the deen has great rights after that likewise. Other great obligations that must be fulfilled for the Islam to be proper and good. Other great obligations likewise that must be fulfilled for the Islam to be proper and good. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-Muslim and sallim al-Muslimuna min nisanihi wa yadi. A true Muslim is the one who the rest of the Muslims are safe from his hand and from his tongue. If the people are not safe from one's tongue and one's hand, this is an indication that his Islam is deficient and it's not complete. So there are obligations with regards to the eyes and with regards to the tongue, and with regards to the hands and the manner that we move and the way that we act and conduct ourselves that perfect and complete the Islam. And if we do not perform them properly, our Islam will be deficient. Our Islam will be deficient. So everything the Prophet wasallam came with is called Al-Islam. The shahada is at Islam. A salah is, is at Islam. All of this is from at Islam. Giving charity, obligatory, not obligatory. This is at Islam. And fasting the month of Ramadan is Islam. And making the pilgrimage to the house and making the Umrah is at Islam. Seeking knowledge in the masajid, in the life site, this is Islam. Memorizing the book of Allah, giving the khutbah, learning how to teach and learning how to call the people, giving advice, smiling in the face of your brother, helping your mother, seeking the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal, being kind to your father, respecting him and honoring him for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. All of this is from Al Islam. All of this is from Al Islam, from the great sacred rites of Al Islam. So everything the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came with is Al Islam. And he did not come with anything like Ali Imam Malik ibn Anas rahimahullah ta'ala, the great scholar of Al Islam, he mentioned, Laysa fiddini shay'un khafif. Laysa fiddini shay'un khafif. There's nothing in, in the deen that's considered light. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did not come with anything light. None of the commandments are light, barakallah fikum, and not the prohibitions. And none of the things that are recommended, likewise, they're light. And nothing that is disliked is what, it's not light. It's not light. This is major. This is major. Some things are heavier than others, and some things are more severe or serious than others. But all of it is Islam, and all of it is great, and all of it is beneficial, and all of it is valuable, and all of it is virtuous at the peak of virtue. And all of this is virtuous at the peak of virtue. And barakallah fikum, your virtue that you have is according to how much you learn about that, and how fast, and how well you hold fast to it. How much you learn about that and how well you hold fast to it. And how well you hold fast to it and you uphold your, your religion. You uphold your religion. And the clarification of the virtues of Al Islam began with the first verse. And he says, In the statement of Allah the Most High, and today I have completed for you your religion. And I have perfected my blessing upon you. Perfected my favor upon you. And I'm pleased for you with Ad Islam as your deen. I am pleased for you with Ad Islam as your deen. Meaning your religion and way of life. Meaning your religion and way of life. So the point here with regards to this is to clarify that from the virtue of Ad Islam is that it's complete and perfect. From the virtue of Al Islam is that it's complete and perfect. On this day, I have completed your religion for you. So the religion of Al Islam is complete. And this is from the most beautiful affairs of this religion. That is complete. And from that which makes it even more beautiful that not only is it complete, but it was completed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, I have completed for you. Your religion. So the religion is complete, and our Lord Subhanahu is the one who has completed it. So this is all from the beauty of Al Islam, and from the perfection of, of Al Islam, and from the goodness of Al Islam, and for a reason for a believer to, to yaftakhir and to be proud and thankful and happy that he's a Muslim upon a religion that is complete. Not only is it complete, but rather it was completed by the Lord of the worlds, Subhanahu wa Taala. The religion of Al Islam, ni'matun tamma, ni'matun tamma. It's a complete blessing. It's a complete blessing. The people of knowledge, they mentioned that the ni'mah is two types. Ni'matun tamma wa ni'matun naqisa. There's a ni'mah tamma, a complete blessing. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati. And I have perfected my blessing for you. 
So al Islam is a complete, perfected blessing. And there's also other type of ni'am, like in the Hanafisa. وَالنِّعْمَ التَّامَّةِ هِيَ لَتِ لَا شَرَّ فِيهَا بِوَجْهِ مِنَ الْوُجُوءِ النِّعْمَ التَّامَّةِ The complete, perfect blessing. The perfect blessing is a blessing in favor from Allah that has no evil or no foul outcome in it whatsoever. And this is the blessing of Al-Islam. The blessing of Al-Islam is all good and no evil whatsoever. It's all good and no bad whatsoever. There's nothing bad about Islam. There's nothing bad in Islam. There's nothing weak in Al-Islam. Islam, all of it is strong. Al-Urwa, al wufqa It's all strong. <laughs> It's all strong. Barakallahu feekum. It's all good. It's all joy. It's all happiness for those who love it and learn it and follow it and hold fast to it. It's nothing but goodness. It's nothing but goodness. Alhamdulillah. As for some other aspects of some different types of ni'am, there are some also things in life that are considered ni'mah like in the hanaqisa. Wihrati takunu fiha khayran musharr. And his blessings. There are other blessings that, that are good, no doubt, but they have good and evil in them. Good and evil in them, like your wealth, and like your children, and like your spouses, and the likes like this. No doubt to have a spouse is a great blessing, but sometimes it comes with evil, or hardship, or difficulty, or hardship, or difficulty. Likewise, having wealth, lawful wealth, even lawful wealth. Lawful wealth is a blessing, but sometimes a person could be tried with regards to his wealth, and maybe there could be some type of evil, or hardship, or, 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 or bad things that come along with that. So it's very important to learn the tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal and to show thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in this manner, by establishing the tawheed, the blessings become complete and perfect. Because the one who realizes that these blessings are from Allah Azza wa Jal, he will strive to use them in the pleasure of Allah. And that, in that manner, the blessing becomes perfect with the blessing of Al-Islam. With the blessing of Al-Islam. But if a person were to use these physical blessings contrary to what is clarified in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, تَتَحَوَّلْ النِّعَمُ إِلَى النِّقَمْ the blessings they turn into retribution. The blessings they turn into retribution. If a person does not use them in the avenues that are lawful and permissible, they're not a favor for him. They become a trial for him and a means for his failure and destruction. A means for his failure and destruction. A believer should remember that, that it's not possible. It's not possible to disobey Allah except by using his favors and blessings. So therefore one should be shy to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his favors and and blessings with his favors and with his blessings. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahimahullah ta'ala, from the great scholars of hadith, he died in the year 198. He died in the year 198, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, A'zamu ni'matin an'ama allahu biha ala ibadihi an arrafahum la ilaha illallah. The greatest blessing, the greatest favor, the greatest favor that Allah has bestowed upon His slaves is that He has taught them La ilaha illallah. That He has taught them La ilaha illallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us La ilaha illallah. The proper and the good meaning. So Islam is a complete religion and by the completion of Islam, the bounty and favor of Allah was perfected. So therefore likewise, that Islam is a perfect blessing with no evil or deficiency or weakness or anything bad in it whatsoever. And also in this verse as well, Allah, He mentioned, And I'm pleased with Al-Islam for you as a deen, as a religion and way of life. So from the virtue of Al-Islam is that Allah is pleased with it. Is that it's a religion that is pleasing to Allah. And Allah is pleased with us whenever we establish it. And this is why... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with the companions. Whenever we mention the companions, any one of them, what do we say? Why do we say that? Why, why do we say that? Because Allah, He said that. And likewise, Allah, He says, Allah is pleased with them. Allah is pleased with them. So it's the companions that Allah is pleased with. And this has a great relationship to this verse and to the virtue of Al-Islam. Because this verse here, Ariyama, akmautu lakum dinakum. This verse here was revealed in the end of the life of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Hajjat al wada On the day of Jumu'ah, on the day of Arafah. The people of Nara, as they mention, approximately 80 days before the death of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to imagine this. You have to imagine this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he spent 13 years in Mecca striving to establish La ilaha illallah. 
striving to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling the people, meeting great hardship and difficulty and persecution, death and loss of loved ones and wealth and property and the likes until he fled for his life. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hiding in a cave. Hiding in a cave until he made it to Medina, it didn't stop. They continued to fight him and fight him. And he continued to, to strive to establish the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, establishing the sacred rites little by little by little by little, all the way until now in Hajjat al Wada on the day of Jumu, on the day of Arafah. After this 23 years of striving in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah He revealed, On this day, I have completed for you your religion. And I have perfected my favor upon you. And I am pleased with that Islam as a deen and way of life. So the Prophet is being informed now that Allah has completed the religion. And the religion was completed at the conveyance of Prophet Muhammad and at the application of his companions. You understand that? The religion was completed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the conveyance and the hard work and effort and diligence of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He conveyed the message. He conveyed the message until Allah, He says, the religion is complete. And not only did He convey the message, but he, those who believed in Him and followed Him, His noble companions radiallahu anhum, they followed that message and established it in that time until the religion was complete. Until the religion was complete. So what is the complete religion? The religion of the Sahaba. Radiallahu anhu. Because it was at their application that the religion was complete. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he received the revelation. And he conveyed the message to them diligently. And gave sincere advice. And he did not leave off anything whatsoever. Or conceal or hide anything. Rather he conveyed the message truthfully and sincerely to his companions. And they by the grace of Allah accepted that wholeheartedly and applied it in their life until Allah He said, For this reason, Al Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Dar al-Hijra, Malik ibn Anas, he died in year 179. Rahmatullahi alayhi he said, Man, man ra'a anna fi deen illahi bid'atun hasana faqad za'ama anna Muhammadin khan al Whoever claims or believes that in the deen of Al-Islam there's a bid'ah hasana, a good innovation, then he's claiming that Muhammad betrayed the message. This statement right here from the Imam from Imam Malik rahimahullah is of the utmost benefit. So whatever was not deen on that day, it will never be deen today. This is very simple to understand. Whatever was not deen on that day, it would not be deen today. Did they celebrate the birthday of the Prophet on that day? Then it's not deen today. That's not from deen today. Anything, any, any other aspect of worship. If it was not deen on that day, whenever Allah completed the religion at the conveyance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the application of his companions, radiallahu anhum, it would not be deen today. So everything that's contrary to what they were upon is contrary to al Islam. And it's not included in Al Islam. And rather, what is intended here to understand clearly is it's rejected. It's rejected. Allah He says, likewise, وَمَن يَبْتَغِي غَيْرُ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا. And whoever seeks other than Al Islam as a way of life. The next verse, the next verse, the author he the author he made, وَقَالَ لِهِ وَمَن يَبْتَغِي غَيْرُ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا. And whoever seeks other than Islam as a way of life, any other than what they were upon on that day, whoever seeks other than, than Islam. It will never be accepted from him. And he'll be a loser in the hereafter. Anything that is not from Islam, it's not accepted. This is from the virtue of Al-Islam. Al-Islam is accepted. Al-Islam, deenun makbul. Deenun maradiyun makbul. And in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the virtue of Al-Islam is that it's a deen, a religion, a way of life that's pleasing to Allah, and Allah, he would accept it from you. As for the other religions that's contrary to Al-Islam, Allah does not accept it from you. The evidence, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرُ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا and whoever seeks other than Al Islam as a way of life, then he will never be accepted from him. Was the birthday, celebrating the birthday of the Prophet Deen on that day? It was not Deen on that day. Would it be accepted from them? No, it would not be accepted from them. Because whoever seeks other than Islam as a Deen, it will never be accepted from him. Wallahi, the religion of Allah is very easy to follow. It's very, this is from, from the beauty of Al Islam. From the beauty of Al-Islam and Mahasin al-Din Anahu Deenun Yusuf. 
Dino Yusr was sah is sahula, it's easy. The creed is easy. You only worship the creator. You don't worship nobody else. You only worship the creator. You don't worship nobody else. It's easy. It's not hard. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. It's very easy. What was not deen on that day? It's not deen today. Whoever seeks a way other than what they were upon on that day, it'll never be accepted from them. So stop ser searching for another way. Suffice with the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, and you'll be happy. And all those problems will go away. And all those doubts will go away. And all the worry and grief will go away. It lies in establishing the religion. Al-Quwa fit deen. Al-Quwa al-Haqiqiyya fit deen. Al-Quwa. What is that? Fit deen. Whoever wants, whoever wants to, Izzah, he wants might. Fa'inna lillahi, Izzah jami'ah. The might is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to have might, you want to have honor, you want to have respect, you want to have goodness, happiness, joy in this life, then you learn the deen of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you leave your customs and cultures and your ways that are contrary and you will have might and you will have honor and you will have respect. You will have happiness and you have joy. And so long as a person prefers something from his customs and whims and contradiction, and contradiction to Al-Islam, then his blessing the blessing in his right will not be complete. He will continue to have problems until he meets his Lord. We understand this? This is very important. The true Islam, the pure Islam is the Islam that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came with. The Islam that he taught his companions. Radiallahu anhum, that which they were upon, radiallahu anhum on, on that day. Anything that's contrary after that is not from Islam. It can't be from Islam. How could it be from Islam and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died in past and the revelation had ceased? How could it be from Islam and Abu Bakr and Umar with men and Ali did not know about it? Radiallahu anhum. Is it possible? It's not possible. This is, the, this is common sense. Common sense. It's very clear. Alhamdulillah. But the devil, he has played games with the believers and the enemies of Islam have planted doubts in, in, in the ranks by introducing, by, by, by hypocrites and the likes like this, and, and encouraging uh, misguidance and deviation until the point that many of the Muslims have turned away from the Al-Urwa al, al, al in entirety and began calling on others besides Allah Azawajal and devoting themselves to others besides Allah Azawajal and crying out of fear and hope to others besides Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala so learn the religion inshallah you will benefit whoever seeks other than Al-Islam as a religion a way of life it will never be accepted from him and in the hereafter he will be from the losers the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the ninth year, the year before what we were just discussing, the revelation of this verse, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to make hajj with the believers, to make hajj with the believers and also uh, a number of companions they went from them, Abu Hurairah and also Ali, he came later radiallahu anhum and Abu Hurairah and Ali radiallahu anhum they were ordered to proclaim, they were ordered to proclaim in this in this Hajj. بعد عامنا هذا لا يطوف بالبيت مشرك ولا أريان. No pagan will, will make tawaf around the bait, or around the house, and nor anyone who is naked. After this time, and then they would proclaim likewise. ولا يدخل الجنة إلا نفس مسلمة. ولا يدخل الجنة إلا نفس مسلمة. And no one will enter paradise except for a Muslim soul. Except for a Muslim soul. The only people who enter paradise are are Muslims. The true followers of the prophets and messengers, a Muslim soul. So the Muslims, they're all promised paradise, those who die upon Islam. But the way that they enter are not the same. The way that they enter are not the same. Some Muslims, when we ask Allah from His grace and His mercy, they enter Jannah with no reckoning and no punishment. Nothing but honor. Nothing but honor in the hereafter. In this life, they die in honor. In this life, they die in honor. The, the angels come to them and honor them. Salamun alaykum tibutum. Fadduhuluha khalidin. The angels, they come to them giving salam. The angels, they come to them honoring them and respecting them. In the hereafter, in the grave, they have nothing but honor. And in the hereafter, they have nothing but honor. They have nothing but honor and goodness in their life. And in the hereafter, because of their Islam. Because of their Islam. Tamasaku bil urwa al wuthqa. Huh? al ikram. For this reason, Shaykh al Islam, what did he say? Rahimahullah. A'adamu al karama luzumu al istiqama. The greatest honor from Allah Azza wa Jal is to continuously hold fast to the obedience of Allah, to be upright and steadfast day in and day out until you die. Until you die. The greatest blessing after this blessing about Islam is to live upon Islam and to and, and to live and to live in a manner that whenever the angels of death come for your soul, they give you salam and your Lord is pleased with you. This is the greatest honor. That you will live in this life until the moment that you die, you die in a manner your Lord is pleased with you. The greatest disgrace, 
the greatest failure. That a person will live in this life and the, and the manner that he's living, whenever he dies, the angels of death come to him and his Lord is angry with him. This is failure. This is fair. Some people think success is to kick a ball into a net or to shoot a ball into a hoop or to get a big bank check, a big, a big, a big bank account, have a big paycheck, to have a big car. This is success for some people. That, see, this is, true success is as I mentioned, that whenever you die, you die in a manner that your Lord is pleased with you. And you go to the pleasure of Allah. And you go to the, the mercy and the pleasure of Allah. And the greatest failure is not to go bankrupt. It's not to lose a job. The greatest failure is that one he would die and Allah is angry with him and not pleased. And Allah is angry with him and not pleased. The most important thing, Ra'su al-Amr al-Islam. Ra'su al-Amr al-Islam. La yadkhuru jannata illa nafsu muslima. So some Muslims, they're going to enter with no reckoning, with no punishment, nothing but honor. Others, because of a deficiency in their Islam, they're going to be taken to account for their sins and they're going to be punished in the hellfire, a punishment of purification. If Allah did not choose to forgive them and show mercy and pardon them. And this is the reality. And we should not be like the Jews who are blameworthy and blamed in many places in the book of Allah. And from that which they're blamed for is their statement, In the fire is only going to touch us a number of days. So therefore they live following their desires and their whims and showing preference to this worldly life and selling the, the, the ayat of Allah and uh, turning their back upon the commandments. And this is what led them to the anger of Allah. This is their outcome. From having beliefs like this, doubts and misconceptions, and their creed like this, the fire will only touch us for a few days. So we'll not say that. We'll not say that. We'll strive to establish our religion, establishing the commandments and prohibitions, and uh, establishing the deen in our life in public and in private, and hope for the mercy of Allah. And hope for the mercy and the pardon and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After this, the author he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in his book and this this is my straight path so therefore follow it and this is my straight path this verse has come and amongst other verses mentioning commandments and prohibitions mentioning commandments and prohibitions the great commandments of Tawheed and the other sacred rites about Islam likewise and the prohibition of shirk so on and so forth in the, midst, in the midst of mentioning a number of sacred rites about Islam, Allah, He says, sirati mustaqim. Fulfilling these rites, fulfilling these rites, establishing this deen, this is my straight path. This is my straight path. Fattabi'uhu. So therefore, you must follow it. So here's the order to follow the straight path. To follow the straight path. And do not follow the other pathways that are contrary to our Islam. Do not follow the other pathways that are contrary to al Islam, or else they will lead you astray, away from the straight path of Allah Azza wa Jal. Or else they will, it will lead you astray, away from the straight path of Allah Azza wa Jal. In some narrations, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that Allah, Darab Allahum lakum mathalan, sarata mustaqima. Allah has struck an example for you, a straight path, a straight path. And, and it's an example uh, and a parable, a beautiful narration uh, narrated by, uh, narrated by, and it's a long narration, but we take the point of evidence from that. In the, the straight path, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was sirat al-Islam. A sirat al-Islam. So what is intended here? When hadha sirati mustaqiman. Fattabi'u. The straight path is al-Islam. The straight path is al-Islam. The Islam of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. Abu Ariya. Ar-Riyahi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he's from the Tabi'een. He's from the noble Tabi'een, the students of the companions. He was asked about the straight path. He was asked about the interpretation of the straight path. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. So he said, as-sirat al-mustaqeem, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sahibahu min ba'dihi Abu Bakr al-Umar. He said that as-sirat al-mustaqeem, the straight path, what is it? It is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his two companions after him, Abu Bakr al-Umar. And this is the proper understanding, interpretation, the straight path, the true Islam. It is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upon in Abu Bakr and Umar. This is very easy to understand. This is very easy to understand. Anything that they were not upon in creed and belief or in worship and the likes, this cannot be from Islam. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's ascribed to Islam falsely. It's ascribed to Islam falsely. 
So Islam is a straight path. So this is from the beauty about Islam. And Islam is straight and upright. When the Quran Yahdi Lilati Hiya Aqwam. This Quran guides to that which is most upright in all affairs, in creed and belief, first and foremost. And likewise in actions of worship and devotion, and manners and conducts, and dealings and transactions, buying and selling, the marriage and divorce, Ad Islam, the Quran and guides to the most upright, beneficial and good way. The most upright, beneficial and good way. Ad Islam, whenever it's understood in its true light, is all good. Is all good. Brothers understand that language, huh? It's all good. There's no bad. You say that I saw everything's all good. Al Islam is all good, Barakalafik. Khairun kullu. Khairun kullu. But sometimes we don't have good because of our desires. And we're not purifying the Islam in our hearts and our lives. We're not purifying the Islam in our hearts and our lives. From the example of this, the hadith of Abi Hurairah, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, husni Islam mar'i, tarkuhu ma la From the good Islam of a person, is that he leaves that which that, that, that doesn't concern him. So that means that a person who's involved in things that doesn't concern him, like that which is haram first and foremost, that doesn't concern a believer. Who gets involved in the likes of this stuff, his, in the likes of these things, his Islam is not good. Because the one who leaves those things, he has a good Islam. مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْئِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَعَنِي إِذَا مِنْ سُوءُ أو مِنْ سَيِّ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْئِ From the bad, the bad Islam of a person, and his crowd from النَّاقُسَ فِي دِينِهِ is that he'll busy himself with that which doesn't concern him. Meaning the Islam can be good and complete or it can be weak and deficient. And if a person is not careful, it can go away entirely. It can go away entirely. We've seen that Sufyan al rahimahullah, he was afraid of that. He would cry, afraid that his Islam, his Tawheed, will be stripped from him. Will be stripped from him. So the, the, the straight path that we're ordered to follow is following the legislation and the law that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he taught his companions radiallahu anhum that they were upon and that which they taught their students after them and their students after, after them in those three generations which has come in the narration of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu anhum that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said khairun nas qarni thumma ladina yalunahum thumma ladina yalunahum the best of mankind is my generation and then those who follow them, and then those who follow them. And this is because the best of the generation is the generation of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they learned directly from him and they applied what they learned from him while he's witnessing and he affirmed them over their application. He affirmed them on their application, meaning that what they applied was the correct Islam that was revealed to him until Allah was pleased with their application and Allah completed the religion upon that. You understand? And then likewise, they taught their students and they learned likewise in the same manner. And the, the next generation as well, until the, until, until the lands expanded and the enemies became strong and clever and very deviant and the, the Islam became challenged, became challenged from within, from within and the deviation began to happen. The point is that these three generations, they're praised in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and they're praised because of their establishment of Al-Islam. So the one who wants to know what is Al-Islam, the Islam that is, that is pure, the Islam that is good, he must refer back to these generations. He must refer back to these generations. This is what is intended. When I have the sirati, mustaqim and fatabiu, fatabiu. Any Islam haula? There are the ones upon the straight path. There are the ones upon the straight path. Anyone contrary to them is not upon the straight path. Wala tatabiu asubula. Do not follow the other ways. Do not follow Christianity. Do not follow Judaism. Do not follow Hinduism. Do not follow these other ways. Do not follow the Turuq al Sufiya that, that are contrary to that way. These are all deviant ways. These are all deviant ways. The right way is the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is contains. All of the other ways, they're deviant ways. Do not be deceived. And do not be lonesome. Because the people who are truly following this way, they're few. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us about this. Not to cause us to worry, but rather giving us glad tidings. In that Islam abada. Islam began as something strange and it's going to return as Islam, Islam, the Islam of Prophet Muhammad Even if people are accepting Islam left and right, maybe it's not so strange anymore, but the true Islam is strange. Al Islam, Bada'a al Islam, al Islam al Haq, Bada'a Gharibin, Wasayyudu Gharibin kama Bada'a, and it's going to return to be strange. There's a lot of Muslims today, maybe even in this city, there's a lot of Muslims, but those who are holding fast to the true Islam, they're strange. And they're few. Maybe even people, they put phone in him. Oh, this guy, he always does this. And they make fun of them. And they just have to be patient. 
And you just have to be patient, and you have to be sincere, and you have to be firm. And you beg Allah Azza wa Jal to grant you steadfastness. And inshallah, Allah will bring benefit for you and by way of you. Bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. So do not follow the other ways. Do not follow the other, the other ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He ordered His Prophet in His book, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ So how is that istiqama ala sirat al-mustaqim? كَمَا أَمَرَ اللَّهِ To be steadfast upon the straight path is in the manner that Allah has ordered. Not in the manner of any other way contrary to that. And do not follow their desires. What do the desires do? وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ is similar to lie. It's similar to وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ سُبُلْ the subul, what are the subul? The pathways that lead away. Al-ahwa wa al-bid'a wa al-inhirafat fi al-aqa'id wa al-akhlaq wa al-ibadah wa fi al-aqa'id wa al-ibadah wa al-akhlaq. You need to be deviant, to deviate in creed, to deviate in worship, to deviate in, in, in manners and conduct. This is the ways, the pathways that lead away from the straight path. So do not follow them. Do not follow their desires. Istaqim. Istaqim kama umir. Fastaqim wastaqim kama umirta. Wala ta'tabi'a. In another verse Allah, he says, Fastaqim kama umirta wa man taba ma'aka. Wala ta'tqo. Innahu lima ta'amaluna basir. And be firm and upright in the manner you were ordered and, and those along with you. And those who repent along with you. And do not transgress the limits. Transgressing the limits is going beyond the straight path. And not being upright. And in this manner a person is following the subu. We have been order to follow the straight path, and we have been forbidden from following the subu, the subu, the other pathways. We're ordered to follow the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, and we are forbidden from following the other ways that are contrary to that. We have been forbidden from following the other ways that are contrary, that are contrary to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, in the faraqu deenahum wa kanu shi'an, lasta minhum fi shay. Indeed, those who divide their religion, those who divide their religion, and they follow the other ways, they follow those desires, they follow those innovative ways, they follow those customs or cultures that are contrary to the deen of Al-Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal, He said to His Prophet, Lasta minhum fi shay. You're free from them entirely. You're free from them entirely. So those people who follow those deviant ways, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is free from them. The, the, those who follow the ways of Christianity and Judaism, those who follow the ways uh, uh, of the different Sufiya, Naqshabadiyya, Diobandi, all these different deviant ways, all of these different deviant, deviant sects, whatever they may be, whatever they may be called, and the likes like this, all of these innovated ways, the ways of the Khawarij, and the ways of the Qadariyya, and the ways of the Murjiyya, Maturidiyya, Ashariyya, all of these deviant ways, deviant creeds, all of them, the Prophet's free from them. And these ways are not accepted. Huh? And if they die in that manner, they'll be a loser in the hereafter. If, they're, if they have the foundation of Islam, they're not going to be an entire loser. But they're going to be amongst the people who have been tried in their religion and they'll be taken into account for that. We understand this. We understand this. So the pure Islam, the true Islam, this is the one that is virtuous and this is the means of savior and this is that urwa al wufqa that will never fail you. It will never fail you in this life, it will never fail you in your grave, and it will never fail you on the day of resurrection. On the day of resurrection. As for if you hold on to something else and that urwa is weak for you, then uh, you are going to face the outcome of your sins. You want to face the outcome of your deeds and your deficiency. So therefore, again, we have to learn the deen of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. This is the virtuous way. This is the true way. This is the good deen. This is the good deen. The author, he says, Hafidhahullahu ta'ala wa anubay ibn Ka'bin radiyallahu anhu anna rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala lahu inna allaha amarani an aqra alayka فَقَرَ عَلَيْهِ لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَافَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ فَقَرَ عَفِيهَا إِنَّ ذَاتَ الدِّينِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْحَنِيفِيَةِ الْمُسْلِمَةِ لَا الْيَهُودِيَةِ وَلَا النَّسْرَانِيَةِ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ خَيْرًا فَلَنْ يُكْفَرَهِ رواه الترمذي وقال حسن صحيح وصححه الحاكم The author he mentioned the narration of Ubay ibn Ka'ab رضي الله عنه that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him Indeed, Allah has ordered me to recite to you. So then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he recited to him, Lam yukunil ladina kafaru min ahli kitab, which is Surah Al-Bayna. Surah Al-Bayna, this is the chapter of the clarification. So he recited it. Faqara'a fiha, and he recited in this in, in this recitation, in that dini inda Allahi al-Hanifiya al-Muslima. Lal Yahudiya wa la nasraniya. Man ya'mal khayran falan yukfarah. 
And in this recitation that he recited, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to obey, he recited, Inna that the deen, Inda Allahi al Hanifiya al Muslima. Indeed, the true reality of the religion with Allah is al Hanifiya al Muslima. Is al Hanifiya al Muslima. Not Judaism, la Yahudiya, wa la Nasraniya. The true religion, that the deen, and that the shaykh, and the haqiqat. The true reality of the deen with Allah Azza wa Jal is al Hanifiya al Muslima. Not al Yahudiya, and not al Nasraniya. And whoever does good, it will not be. Rejected, or not, it would not be shown any ingratitude. He says it's narrated by a Tirmidhi, and he said that the hadith is good and is, is authentic, and it's been authenticated by Al Hakim. The people of Nada, as they mention here, that this verse here is from the verses that are abrogated. From the verses that are abrogated, the text is abrogated, but the ruling remains. The ruling remains. And he meaning, if we were to read Surah Tabayin in it today, we will not find that verse there. So there are verses in the book of Allah Azza wa that were revealed and they were recited and they were known and the, and the rulings were derived from them. And then later they were abrogated. Later they were abrogated. Either abrogated by the verse being removed and not recited anymore along with the ruling remaining or even likewise some verses were removed and the ruling was removed along with it. And there are other verses that remain and recited until this day but the rulings are abrogated. So this is from the issue of nesq, of abrogation. So this verse here was abrogated, although the ruling remains. Although the ruling remains. The true deen with Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Hanifiyyah. Al-Hanifiyyah is from Al-Hanif. Al-Hanif, yani Al-Mayl. And to summarize, Al-Hanifiyyah, yani when the one who's described with this trait is called Al-Hanif. Wa Ibrahim alayhi salam kana Hanifan. Wa millatuhu Al-Hanifiyyah. The way of Ibrahim is Al-Hanifiyyah. And to summarize, it means Al-Iqbal ala Allah Azza wa Jal wa li'arad amma siwa. الإقبال على الله عز وجل الإقبال على الله عز وجل بالكلية بالكلية to to advance and to devote oneself to Allah in entirety in obedience and entirety وليعراض عما سوى to turn away from everything besides that this is Hanifiyah a person he would devote himself to Allah with Tawheed and turn away from shirk and disobedience he would he would dedicate himself to Allah with Tawheed and obedience and submission and he would turn himself away from from paganism and polytheism and disobedience. And this is the definition of Al Islam. Al Islamu lillahi bi tawheed wa tiyad lahu wa la tiyad lahu bi ta'ah wa bara'atu min al wa ahli. This is Al Milla Al Hanifi. This is the good way. The good way. The good way. May Allah put us upon that way in our families. May Allah put us upon the good way. The good way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa truthfully and make us from his followers sincerely. And make us prefer and to love that way until we meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala from his grace and from his mercy. From his grace and from his mercy. So we supplicate for the likes of this. And our hearts desire these affairs, but we have to work. We have to work. It can be empty hopes and empty supplications. Whether we supplicate and we call and we beg and we hope and then we strive. And then we strive against our, our souls in the application of that knowledge. And the application of that knowledge. May Allah bless you. After this, the author, he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, wa an abi hurayweta, a dawsi. رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال والذي نفس محمد بيده لا يسمع بي أحد من هذه الأمة يهودي ولا نسراني ثم يموت ولم يؤمن بالذي أرسلت به إلا كان من أصحاب النار رواه مسلم رواه مسلم The author he mentioned the narration of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه الدوسي that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that I swear by the one whom the soul of Muhammad is in his hands. The prophet he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wal nafsu Muhammadin biyadi. I swear by the one whom the soul of Muhammad is in his hands. Swearing by Allah. Yani wallahi. La yasma'u bi ahadun min hadhihi al-ummah. No one hears about me from this ummah. No one hears about me from this ummah. We must understand what is intended from the word ummah. The word al-ummah. The ummah to Muhammad. The word ummah to Muhammad has two understandings. It has two understandings, just similar like we mentioned, Al-Islam has two understandings, right? So these terms, they have two understandings, and they must be understood properly in each context. So Ummah to Muhammad has a general encompassing understanding, and it has a specific understanding. The Ummah of Muhammad has a general understanding, and it is all of the jinn and mankind after the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're from Ummah to Muhammad. All of them. They're called Ummah to Ad-Dawah. Ummatu ad-Dawah. Ummatu ad-Dawah, kullu al-Nas, jami'i al-Nas, 
جميع جميع الثقلين جميع الجن والإنس بعد بعثة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى يوم القيامة. All of mankind and jinn after the coming of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم until the day of resurrection they are included the Ummah to Muhammad. They're from the Ummah of Muhammad. From the aspect of what? A da'wa. Meaning that it's an obligation for all of them to believe and follow Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And if they do they have the promise of paradise. And if they refuse they have the threat of the hellfire. The threat of the hellfire. So all of mankind, after the coming of Prophet Muhammad, all of the Jews, all of the Christians, all of the pagans and polytheists, all of them are from the Ummah of Muhammad from this aspect. All of them are from the Ummah of Muhammad from this aspect, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But only a select few from them are given success to believe and to follow. And this is called Ummatul Ijaba. Ummatul Ijaba. The, the Ummah of Muhammad who, who complied, who responded to the call. Any al muslimin Yani al muslimin They're the Muslims. They're the Muslims. So every prophet had an ummah in the same manner. And from the ummah, there are those who responded to the call and there are those who rejected. And those who responded, they were honored and they are promised paradise. And those who rejected, we've seen the foul outcome of them. So likewise, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are those, the, 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 the message that's revealed to him is the final message and it's for all mankind. It's for all mankind. From them, those who accepted, they're called ummah ijabah so here, what is being referred to in this first part here, لا يسمع بأحد من هذه الأمة يهودي ولا نصراني يهودي ولا نصراني No one hears about me from this أمة Not a Jew nor a Christian ثم يموت ولم يؤمن بالذي أرسلت به إلا كان من أسحاب النار And then he died and he did not believe in that which I was sent with except he'll be from the dwellers of the hellfire Except that he'll be from the dwellers of the hellfire. This is no doubt clarifying the beauty of Al Islam. The, from the beauty of Al Islam, that is, if you believe in it and you follow it, you're guaranteed to enter paradise. And from the beauty of Al Islam, is that those who reject it and turn away from it, regardless of what they were upon before, if they remain upon that way, it will never be accepted from them, and hereafter they'll be from the losers, from the dwellers of the hellfire. So, from the beauty of Al Islam, it's a means of safety and savior and sanctity in this life and the hereafter. In this life and in the hereafter. And it's a means of protection. From the greatest loss and the greatest failure. In al khasirina abadina khasiru anfusahum wa alihim yawm qiyamah. The true losers, the true losers are those who lose their souls and their families on the day of resurrection. Those who lose their souls and their families on the day, uh, on the day of resurrection. So the 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 Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was sent to all mankind. He's a prophet for all mankind. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And those Jews and Christians who hear about his message and then they follow, they will have kiflaini min rahmatillah. They'll have two rewards from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Those who believed in Musa and Jesus and they followed their way or they believe in their way and they believe in the books that they received before and then they heard about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and they believe in him too, they have a great reward with Allah Azza wa Jal. A great promise of mercy and goodness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will provide for them a light and, a, and, and guidance that they will see with. And they will have great benefit. But those who reject faith and turn away, their belief in their previous prophet will not help them if they deny the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Denying one messenger is like, is like denying all of them. Denying one messenger is like denying all of them. And the evidence for this, وَكَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And the people of Nuh, they belied the messengers. How could they have belied the messengers whenever? Nuh is the first messenger. Huh? Because denying one messenger is in reality denying all of them. So by, by denying Nuh, they had denied all of them, all the way to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So Allah, he mentioned, nuhin al And the people of Nuh, they have belied and denied and rejected all of the messengers. By rejecting one of them, when he rejects all of them. So one is not a true believer in Nuh. And, uh, and, and Ibrahim and, and, uh, and Musa and Isa until he's a true believer in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So this is a, a great point here that whoever hears about Islam and he did not believe وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنْ And he says وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنْ So the, those who hear about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meaning the evidence is established against, against them and then they live until they die without believing in that which he came with. These are the people who are the dwellers of the hellfire. 
These are the people who are the dwellers of the hellfire. And he meaning these are the people whom Allah created the hellfire for and they'll never leave. This is what these verses are referring to, these people here. Those who die now, and with regards to the people from the Ummah of Muhammad, those who die and did not believe in him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is ultimate failure, wa billah. This is ultimate failure, wa billah, wa billah. There are many benefits here to mention and uh, we have to summarize because of time. How much time do we have left? Huh? 20 minutes. Okay, yeah, great. Jazakallah khaira. Barakallah fikum. Tayyib, it has come about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a number of evidences clarifying clarifying this issue. Clarifying, uh, clarifying uh, this issue that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was sent he was sent to all mankind. Allah he says, وَأُوْحِيَ إِلَيَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ لِأُنذِرَكُمْ بِهِ وَمَنْ بَلَغْ And this Qur'an, the Prophet has ordered to say, and this, and this Qur'an was revealed to me so that I can warn you, and the people of this time, and those whom it reaches. And those whom it reaches. Yani, until the end of, of, the, uh, of the times. رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا Allah, Allah he says, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O mankind, I am the messenger of Allah to all of you. I am the messenger of Allah to all of you. And this is important to understand because until today, in, in these days right now, there are individuals claiming that the Jews and Christians are our brothers and that they will be in Jannah. And that their religion is good. They say, no, you don't have to call them to Islam. They're, they're, he's Christian. Let him be a Christian. He believes in Jesus. Oh, he's a Jew. Let him be a Jew. He's good. He's good. Nah. This is contrary. Wallahi, the evidence is very clear. The hadith right here is in Sahih Muslim. The hadith right here is in Sahih Muslim. That no, no one hears about me. After I have come with guidance, no Jew nor Christian, then he died and did not believe in what I was sent with, except he's from the dwellers of the hellfire. Except he's from the dwellers of the hellfire. So the person who claims the life of these claims, he's opposing the foundation of the religion. What do you have to And he is on the, on the brink of disbelief. What do you have to Maybe he'll be excused because of ignorance. How long? Wallahu alam. This is very dangerous to make the likes of these statements. It's very dangerous to make the likes of these statements and to have the likes of, of this foul creed. The Jews and the Christians. They are not our brothers, and their religion is the religion of falsehood, and uh, it's an evil and a foul way, and those who die upon that, it will never be accepted from them, and in the hereafter, they'll be from the losers. All of this is clarified and discussed, alhamdulillah. Likewise, Allah, He says, وَمَا أَرْسَنَّكَ إِلَّا كَافَةَ لِلنَّاسِ And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except to and the people in entirety, except to all mankind. تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْفُقَانَ عَلَى عَبْدِهِ لِيَكُونَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ نَذِيرًا Blessed is he who has revealed the criterion to his slave, who has revealed the criterion to his slave, so that he can be for all mankind a warner. So these verses here and others, and this hadith that's clear, clarify that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he said to all mankind, white and black, Arab and non-Arab, Christian and Jew, pagan and atheist, all of them, they have to believe in him and follow him. And this is an incumbent requirement upon them, jinn and its. Now jinn, and, and if they do, they have the promise of the goodness of al Islam and the good outcome of the people of al Islam. And if they don't, they have the threat of the fire and uh, and the painful punishment. What do you have to be What do you have to be Likewise, the narrated in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari from the Hadith of Jabir, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Uqtitu khamsan lam yuqtahuna ahadu min al anbiya qabri." I was given five. I was given five that none of the prophets were given before me. Nusiratu bi rubi masirat al I was aided with fear the distance of a month. And the earth was made for me as a place of worship and a means of purification. So any man from my ummah, what is it said about my ummah here? Ummah Rijab, from the Muslims. Any man who, from my ummah, any of my followers, who still comes to him, and wherever he may be, let him pray. And he has no excuse. Let him let him pray. Because the earth is a place of prayer and a means of purification. And a means of purification. And the spoils of war were made permissible, lawful for me. And the prophet before me used to be sent to his people specifically. And I was sent to all mankind in entirety. In entirety. This is something special for the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And that which is special for him. And a virtue for him 
is a virtue for his followers. Is a virtue for he's our prophet. He was sent to us. We're the last. We're the last ummah. There's none after us. There's no followers of prophets coming after us. So this is a great virtue for for him. And because of his virtue, the virtue of his ummah as well. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the virtue of his of his legislation and law. Of his legislation and law. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa utiyatu al-shafa'ah. And I was granted intercession. And I was granted intercession. And also it has been collected by Imam Muslim from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fuddiltu an al-anbiya bisit. Fuddiltu an al-anbiya bisit. I was granted a virtue over the other prophets with six. Utaytu jawami al-karim. I was granted the concise speech. Nusirtu bil-ru'bi. And I was aided with fear. And he meaning Allah will cast fear in the enemies of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who truly, until this day, if you truly fear Allah azza wa jal, then Allah will cause the people to fear you, to honor you and to revere you. But if you fear the people, and, 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 if, you, and if you're deficient in your fear of Allah Azza wa Jalla, then, then, then Allah will cause you to fear the people. Allah will cause you to fear the people. So whenever a person is sincere in his deen, Allah will honor him in this life. And the people will honor him likewise. And he will obtain some of these virtues in this manner. And then he said, وَحِلَّتْ لِي الْغَنَائِمْ And the spoils of war were made permissible for me. وَجُوِلَتْ لِي الْعَرْضُ تُخُورًا وَمَسْجِدًا وَأُرْسِلْتُ إِلَى الْخَلْكِ كَافًا وَأُرْسِلْتُ إِلَى الْخَلْكِ وَأُرْسِلْتُ إِلَى الْخَلْكِ كَافًا And the earth was made for me as a means of purification and a place of prayer and I was sent to all mankind. وَطِيْتُ الشِّفَاءَ And I was granted intercession. So it's an obligation to believe in the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to apply his law and legislation. And to apply his law and legislation and those who do that, they have this great promise of paradise and those who turn away, then they are the people of the hellfire. They, will, they, they are the people of hellfire and all of the previous laws and legislations, Judaism and Christianity, that which was correct from the deen of Musa and that which is correct from the deen of Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, is abrogated with the coming of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam. Is abrogated with the coming of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam. After this, the author, he mentioned Hafidullah, the narration of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, and he said, خط رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطا بيده ثم قال هذا سبيل الله مستقيما ثم خط عن يمينه وشماله ثم قال هذه سبل ليس منها سبيل إلا عليه شيطان يدعو إليه ثم قرأ وأن هذا صراط مستقيما فتبعوه ولا تتبعوا سبلا فتفرق بكم السبيل رواه النسائي في السنة الكبرى وأحمد في المسند واللفظ له وإسناده حسن the author, he mentioned a narration of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he drew one day a line with his hand. He drew one day a line with his hand. And then he said, this is the straight path of Allah. And then he drew on the left and the right lines. And then he drew sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the left and the right lines. And he said, these are the other pathways. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the head of each one of these other pathways, it's a devil calling to it. We're at at the end of the pathway, or at the head of the pathway. Where's the head of the pathway? On the straight line. On the straight path. He drew a straight line like this. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Hada sabirullah mustaqim." This is the straight path of Allah. This is the straight path of Allah. This is the stand. This is the commandments and the prohibitions and abiding by the proper freedom of belief, purifying the tawheed. And then on this, on the right and on the left, there's lines going away from the straight path, leading away from the straight path. And then on the head of every one of these lines is the devil. There's a devil calling to it. It's at the head. It's at the head of the, of the straight, uh, of those lines. And at the beginning, the, those paths, they lead away from the straight path. So the devil, his lying on the straight path. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that in the shaytan, that indeed the devil, he's lying and waiting for the son of Adam on all of his pathways. And if he wants to follow Islam, he tries to warn him away from that. If he wants to make jihad, he tries to make him be a coward. If he wants to, whatever avenue of goodness he wants to establish in the deen, there's a devil there trying to deter him and take him away from that, and to whisper him and to mislead him. To whisper to him and mislead him. Allah Azza wa Jalla, he mentioned in his book what shaitan he said. I'm going to lie and wait for them on your straight path. So the devil is lying awaiting on the straight path. And for this reason, barakallah, many no Muslims, or even people who are born Muslim, yet they are not necessarily 
interested in their religion, when they become interested in their religion, and they want to learn the sunnah and hold fast to that, now the whispers become hard. Now the whispers become severe, and the doubts become, 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 become tough, and the issue becomes a problem now. Because why? Because now he's coming to the straight path, truthfully. He's waking up to this reality. And that's where the devil is lying away. You will not find the majority of them to be thankful. I will lie on your straight path waiting for them. I will come to them in front of them and from behind them. In front of them, meaning I will, I will try to mislead them in their religion, in their deen, and from behind them, causing them to fall back and to not work for the hereafter. And you have doubts about the resurrection and on their light and on their right in every aspect of goodness, on their left and every affair in their life. I will wait for them and try to mislead them. And you will not find the majority of them to be thankful. And the peak of thanks is to make the The peak of thanks is to purify the deen for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to perfect that is in obedience. Is in obedience. But Allah fa'bid. But Allah fa'bid. Wakun min shakirin. Rather, Allah alone worship and be from those who are thankful. So those who are thankful, they worship Allah alone. And the peak of thanks after that, and the perfection of that thanks is perfecting the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then after this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he read the verse of Allah that has proceeded. When this is my straight path, so you must follow. Do not follow the other ways. Do not follow the other ways. All of the innovative ways and the pathways that are contrary to the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions, these are these ways. At the head of them is the devil. There are devils calling you to spin around in the message. The devils calling you to who, 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 who. Those are devils calling to that way. Wudiyadu billah. These different turuq al sufiya and mudilla, wudiyadu billah, and mubtada'a. They have no evidence in the deen of Allah azza wa jal. These are, these are from the deviant ways. Allah, he says, wala ta'tabi usuhu. Do not, do not follow their desires. Do not follow these pathways. Because it will lead you away. It will lead you away. These ways lead you away. Lead you, innovation, deviation in the religion. Contrary to what, what the Messenger وسلم, was upon. And his companions, Rabbi Allah, and lead you away from the straight path. Lead you away from the mercy of Allah. Lead you away from the pleasure of Allah. Lead you away from the safety of the punishment of the hellfire. We understand this. We understand this. This is very serious. Sometimes we have to understand this, remember this, and strive to uphold this. And strive to uphold this. So it's one thing to have knowledge and to understand things in, in, in an academic sense and uh, in theory, and it's another to apply it. And it's another, and it's another to apply it. And uh, the test is, is in the application. So after this, the author, he says, Hafidhullah wa qala Abu Barz al-Aslami, radiyallahu anhu, inna Allah anqadakum. Bilislami will be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah al-Bukhari. He mentioned here that indeed Allah has saved you. Uh, Abu Barza al-Islami radiallahu anhu has indeed Allah has saved you with Islam and with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So al-inqad min al-halak to be saved from danger and from destruction and from failure is by way of Islam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he came with Islam. An indication that they understand this likewise, that it's not just Islam that people ascribe to or claim, but rather the Islam of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the one who knows that are his companions. They're the ones who've seen him pray. And they're the ones who told us that he came. And they're the ones who narrated to us the Quran. And they're the ones who clarified the religion for, for, for us. And it's Allah who chose them. So their religion is the good religion. And anything that's contrary to their religion, it's ascribed to the religion that they had no knowledge of, it is not from al Islam and it's not a means of inqad. Rather, it's a means of halak. It's a means of halak. The author he says, Hafidullah Qala Mujahid al Makki. Mujahid ibn Jabr, he's from the great students of Abu ibn Abbas and Radiallahu Anhu. He says, Ma adri ayu ni'mataini alayya a'zam and hadani lil islami aw a'afani man hadi il ahwa. Rahu jari. He said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Mujahid. From the great students of the from the great students of the companions. He says, I do not know which of the two blessings is greater. Which of the two blessings of Allah is greater? That Allah guided me to Islam or that He saved me from these desires? What are the desires and whims? These pathways that go away. The pathways that go away, the subul, the ahwa, the, the, the innovations and the deviations that are contrary to Islam, these, these, these are called ahwa. Because the people, they follow their desires and they leave the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad 
So he's saying, I don't know which blessing is greater upon me. That I was guided to Islam in the first place, or after being guided to Islam, that I was saved from these desires. And he meaning that the, no doubt the blessing about Islam is so great, but it's not perfect and good and proper and true until a person is saved from those desires and he's holding fast to the Urwa al wufa And he's truly on the straight path of Al-Islam. Because many people, they come to Al-Islam and then they, they follow their desires, which take them away from the straight path. And leading their Islam to become deficient or to be wiped out entirely. Or to be wiped out entirely. You understand that? So no doubt the blessing of Al-Islam is a great blessing, but, but likewise the blessing of guidance to the Sunnah. Guidance to the way of the Sahaba. This is a great blessing because that's the true Islam. That's the true Islam. So it's one thing to be guided to the straight path, to believe there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This is one thing. This is general guidance. But in order to remain steadfast upon the straight path until you die, you have to have detailed guidance. The detailed guidance is the clarification of that which the companions understood. This is the detailed guidance. Holding fast to that is the detailed guidance. In this manner, a person is safe. If not, if he's deficient in that, either in knowledge or application, he will go astray. He will go astray on these different ways that the devils are calling to. And the devils, they're not coming over. Hey, this is innovation. This dhikr here is innovation. Oh, this is shirk. Twaf around the grave is shirk. Blowing up people in the masjid is very bad. But they don't say that. They say it's good. This is Islam. This is deen. Jihad. Right? Dhikr. Dhikr, talabul ilm, they, they, they use legislative terms making it sound good, but they understand it and interpret it in a manner that's contrary, that leads them away. That leads them away. So the point is that these devils here lying on the straight path, they're calling to falsehood, but they decorate the falsehood. They decorate the falsehood, they make it look good. But the one who has knowledge, he will be able to identify that's falsehood. That's falsehood. The one who doesn't have knowledge, maybe he will be tried by that, and he will entertain that. And even perform it thinking that he's doing something good. This is how that some of these people, our children, our brothers, they wind up blowing themselves up in the masjid, saying Allah Akbar, killing the people at Dhuhr time in the house of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Because he's misguided. He was misled by the devils with the Billah, thinking that he's doing something good because of an ignorance in the fundamentals of the religion. Because of the ignorance and the fundamentals of the religion. The other people, the whole home, they're singing the likes like this, or having birthday parties, so on, all, all of these affairs. Because of a, a, of a deficiency in knowledge and a lack of concern, sincerity for Islam. And had they loved Islam properly, then they would spend time to learn it from its proper sources. They would spend time to learn it from its proper sources. And they would hold fast to it. And they would not follow their desires. But there's a test. We're trying with whims and we are trying with, with desires. The author, he says after this, the last narration, وَقَالَ Abu Yusuf al-Qadi Abu Yusuf al-Qadi rahimahullah Ya'qub ibn Ibrahim al-Ansari He's the, one of the great students of of Al Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, Abu Yusuf al Qadi, Rahimahullah, Ru'usu al Ni'am, Thalatha. The head of all blessings are three. Fa'awwaluha ni'matun Islam. Alati la tatimu ni'matun illa biha. The first of them is the blessing of Al Islam, which no blessing is complete except by way of. We discussed that earlier. I indicated this issue earlier. Uh, that the other blessings of the eyes and the ears and the wealth and the children and the health and the likes will not be complete except with Al Islam. Because if not, a person who used them in the anger of Allah, which would be a means of retribution and punishment for him. But by way of al Islam, these other blessings become perfect likewise. Whenever used in the light of al Islam, they'll be used properly in a manner that is pleasing and then they'll truly be blessings. A person who used the wealth and health and the goodness of this life to establish his deen, to seek the pleasure of Allah and the home in the hereafter. So we use these blessings in that which they're created for as a means and help to seek the pleasure of Allah. To seek the pleasure of Allah. As for the one who did not have Islam, or who's deficient in that, we follow his desires, and these are blessings, are not truly blessings, really they're a means of retribution against him. And the second of the head of blessings is the blessing of Afiyah. al Afiyah and his well-being and one's mind and one's body, one's home, one's life. And that, that life is not good except by way of. And if a person is tried in his health or in his wealth or in his safety and security, his life's not good, even if he has money. Even if he has money. But he's tried in these affairs. He's sick, he can't move. He's paralyzed or he's sick, he can't get out of bed. Or he's afraid he can't leave his house because of danger in the, in, in the society. And even if he's healthy, and he, without having this afia in his life, life is not good. 
Life is not good. So to have safety and security in your person and your mind and your health and your body and your environment, to have fi financial stability, all of this is afiyah. Alhamdulillah. This is a great blessing. But it's not true until it's coupled, it's coupled with the blessing of Al-Islam. And it's used in the light of Al-Islam. The Islam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his companions. With Thalitha, Ni'matu al-Ghina allati la yatimu al-Aishu illa biha. And the third one is the blessing of of, of wealth, yani and contentment, with, li with which life and the means of livelihood is not complete except by way of. So the point is that the head of all blessings is uh, the blessing of Al-Islam. And this is no doubt about that. And all blessings are completed by way of this blessing by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Rawahu al-Khatib al-Baghdadi fi tariq al-Baghdadi. Narrated by al-Khatib al-Baghdadi in his book, Tariq al-Baghdadi. Fihi masail. In this chapter, there are masail, yani benefits. We'll take them briefly so that we can close. Bi'ini lahi ta'ala. The first benefit from this chapter is, is the perfection or the complete the completeness, the completeness of the religion of Al-Islam. The second one, and The second one is that Allah is pleased with Islam for us. And he so he does not accept from anyone any other deen besides it. Atharitha. The third benefit is the falsehood of all other religions. That all other religions are false and not accepted except for Al-Islam. Al-Rabi'ah, the fourth one, and the deen al-Haq, huwa ma ja'a bihi al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The fourth benefit is that the true religion is the religion that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. Al-Khamisa, the fifth one, and al-Ahwa wal bid'ah laysat minhu. And the fifth benefit is that the desires and innovations are not from it. Desires and innovations are not from the Islam that the Prophet came with. As-Sadisa anna man zaga an al-huda fa huwa shaytan yad'u ila rada. And the sixth benefit is that whoever deviates away from the guidance, then he is a devil, calling to destruction in the lowly way. Calling to destruction in the lowly way. As-Sabi'ah, i'zamu ni'mat al-Islam wa sunnati wa al-afiyah. Min al -ahwa. The seventh benefit is the greatness of the blessing of Al-Islam and the Sunnah and being safe and free from desires. From desires. Following the desires in the religion, the misconceptions, misunderstandings, and the deviated, innovated, newly introduced ways in Al-Islam. To be safe from that is the perfection and the completeness of, of the blessing of Al-Islam. Of the blessing of Al-Islam. So from the benefits of studying the chapter, this chapter here, and the likes of this, fall blue al Islam. And the benefits that we have of studying the virtues of al Islam is that now you should feel, brother, of the great blessing that you have been given. The great blessing that you have been given. Many people outside these doors, they don't have this blessing. Right outside these doors, they don't have this blessing. They're completely lost and have no clue to Islam and the value of Islam and the goodness of Islam and, and, and the nobility of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and, and his good way and his, and his good guidance. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but Allah had chose you. Allah had chose you and he has selected you out of all of them. Alhamdulillah. So you should thanks now. So now this should cause you to realize the virtue of this religion and the value of this blessing that you have, making you more concerned to hold fast to it, to learn more about it. And a person, if he loves something, he will study it and learn it. And if he loves something, he'll talk about it all the time. He'll talk about it all the time. He'll never get tired of talking, and talking, and talking, and talking, and talking because he loves it. Those people who love basketball, they talk about basketball all day and all night. I mean, I mean, would the a boy be quiet? Right? If he, or if he loves this other thing, if he loves cars, for example, if he loves this, whatever a person he loves is always talking, about talking. He knows all of these minor details. Some of them are insignificant. We don't even care about them. He knows all of them. Why? Because he loves that thing. So in this manner, we should love our deen. We should love Islam and learn all about it. And spend time learning it and then helping others learn it likewise. In this manner, our community will grow and be, and be good and have much blessing. And have much blessing. Also, studying this chapter, the likes of this chapter, the virtue of Islam is from the means to, be, be, to remain firm in the religion. From the means to remain firm in the religion and to be steadfast and also for encouragement is an encouragement to avoid and stay away from innovations and the misguided ways in Al-Islam. May Allah Azza wa Jal make these uh, classes a benefit for all of us and make the knowledge a light and a proof for us and not against us. And I apologize for taking too much time. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.